Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I'm evaluating something today and I'm going to take you along on the journey. This is what I used to do. This is a diagnosis of a problem and discovering the way to fix it. This is an Enterpack cylinder. Uh, they're very, very nice hydraulic power units. It's got a spring-loaded hydraulic cylinder so that you can pump it out. And then retract it. Now this cylinder happens to be a 4.9 ton capacity. The 4.9 tons is strictly a, a function of the 10,000 pound capacity of the pump versus the one inch bore of the cylinder. The stroke doesn't determine anything as far as capacity other than distance that the piston can travel before it hits a part. The length of the stroke doesn't do anything other than gives you the distance the piston can travel before it bottoms out. So the diameter of the cylinder, capacity of the pump, the PSI of the pump are all important. Stroke determines how far that cylinder is going to move with every pump. Capacity of the pump at 10,000 PSI it says 10,000 PSI on a one inch cylinder gives me 4.9 tons. The stroke of the cylinder is determined by the length of the shaft, the length of the piston, the length of the barrel of the cylinder itself, and that gives you the amount of travel that you can expect to get out of the cylinder. In this case, the overall cylinder length is 13 and a half inches extended. Retracted, it is 8.375. So that tells me the size of the cylinder. I can determine the size of the pump by the outside dimensions. One of the determining factors is the piston diameter, in this case 0.95, and the stroke, which is one inch. With that information, I can then go to the catalog and see what the parts are. Now this cylinder has a few problems. Some I'll fix, some I'm just going to let go. One of the problems with this pump, this handle's broken. There's a tab that's supposed to come out here on the side that that pin is engages with. That supports the pin and connects the piston rod to the handle. For here at the house, even with that broken out, the pin still rides in the pocket. The piston goes up and down. The pump operates. Unless I can fix that easily, I'm probably going to let it go. There's a capture pin that goes into this tab on the casting and then hooks into this little tab on the handle so that when you drop the cylinder, you can slide that capture pin in. This tab is bent. So I imagine that this thing got dropped or hit and that caused the damage to the handle and bent that pin made it so that it wasn't functional. This shaft is bent. You can see how it orbits when I turn that It originally had a three-lobed handle on it, too. I'm going to remove that shaft, see if I can straighten it, and then bore this handle out. Since this is knurled, I think I can use some uh, epoxy and glue this knob onto there. It doesn't require a whole lot of force to turn that back and forth. 
you can almost use it without the knob but having a knob on there is going to make it a lot more convenient this set was given to me by a friend I have nothing invested in it so whatever I can do to make it work better is just an improvement this is a fiber reinforced nylon reservoir it fills by just pouring oil into there and they recommend interpack oil I'm not always a big fan of saying okay you have to run this kind of thing but when it comes to something like this there's no advantage to trying to cheap out on the oil the pump itself runs about 600 bucks and destroying it just because you're trying to save a few dollars on a quart of oil really doesn't make much sense uh, Interpack sells rebuild kits for these cylinders. This cylinder is pumping. This, the piston extends. Everything works. I'm not going to spend any money on it to buy something that it really doesn't need at this point. But I will determine if there's parts available and see what the cost is going to be before I make the final decision. When I first started as an engineer, I relied almost exclusively on manuals. I still keep a few on the shelf. They're uh, very helpful when it comes to determining exactly what you need. This, In this case, aluminum or steel. Being able to open a manual and discover what's missing, broken, or uh, just <laughs> needs replacement makes all the difference in the deciding what you're going to do with, as far as repairing something. At the turn of the century, all that changed. Now I'm able to go on the internet, find a picture of the cylinder that I'm going to be working on. determine exactly what the part numbers are, sizes, specification, dimensions, series comparison, accessories, and then applications. Makes life a lot easier for a guy trying to make a decision. Now I'm going to spend a little time going through the catalog determining what the repair parts for the pump are and see if I can get the replacement pieces for a reasonable price. If I'm able to I'd like to replace that broken handle casting that would make it a, a lot better system. But if I'm not, then I'm going to get along with what I got. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.